This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Hello. In this episode, we're diving into one of the most transformative forces reshaping the energy landscape, renewables. As solar, wind and other clean sources scale up, they're not just reducing emissions, they're rewriting the rules of how our power grids operate. Joining us today to discuss this is Davide Dallagistina, Head of Business Development and Transformation Officer for Smart Infrastructure at A2A. Hi, Davide. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Mandana. Nice to be here with you today. Thanks for the invitation. Fantastic. So, Davide, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Renewables is one of the hottest topics in the power sector at the moment. It would be really great to know, in your role as Transformation Officer, what your involvement is with renewables integration at A2A. Yeah. Um, as a Transformation Officer, I work also on innovation and digitalization, supporting the DSOs of the A2A group uh, toward uh, the path of better integrating renewables into the distribution grid. And it's also worth recalling that in the past, for more than 10 years, I'll be directly working for the DSO. So I also did some practical project uh, about this topic. Now, renewables is the hot topic in the sector right now. Everybody is working on integrating or preparing the grid to integrate as much as many renewables uh, sources into the grid as possible. But of course, there are knock-on effects for grid operations. So what are, the, are some of the opportunities that you've already experienced with your renewables integration program? And what are the mm -hmm. knock-on effects that you're managing? Yeah, um, yeah, I would start uh, with... Uh... Uh, the less positive side, let's say, and then I conclude with the positive aspect. Uh, let's say, um, I believe that, uh, first of all, as European citizen, I really believe that uh, renewables plays a prominent role to differentiate the energy procurement, and they are essential toward the, to foster the energy transition. So that's to, to make it clear my personal point of view. From a technical perspective, on the other end, they present, they brought about a certain complexity for the network management. Of course, I will present to you uh, my point of view as a network operator, there could be different point of views, but just to make a couple of examples, uh, from a transmission uh, level perspective, we can say they are less uh, dispatchable. They are not easily dispatchable in the sense that their actual production is affected by the weather condition, the real-time weather condition. So for those in charge of balancing the consumption and the generation, uh, this uncertainty makes their job more difficult. On the other side, from a DSO perspective, uh, the most relevant fact is they are connected not only on a medium voltage level, which uh, is traditionally a robust network with a lot of monitoring and automation technology, but they are also connected on low voltage network. Let's think of a domestic PV, for instance, which are really common here, at least in Italy, but expect uh, in, in several places. So in, in the past, uh, we tend to use, as a DSO in general, a fit and forget approach. So basically, you accept the request of, of connecting the renewable energy sources on the network without uh, making too, too many analyses of what could be the long-term impact. Uh, year by year, after this share uh, has been growing for, for such a long period, you could have now some local congestion due to uh, renewable presence or in generally speaking distributed energy resources so those are the challenges i don't want it, please interrupt me if i talk too much otherwise I <laughs> yeah, keep that's fine. yeah sure. um just just to give an example i was really young i was working uh, still in the uh, eight way group i was mm -hmm. uh engaging a, a european research project where we were testing real-time smart meter smart meter and providing real-time data and it was 2012, if I'm not wrong, and we were lucky enough that there was a um, uh, total solar eclipse in that period while we were installing that technology. And what we were able to see at that time was a direct impact of uh, external weather condition, let's say, 
on the generation, the actual generation of PV panels. So from that moment on, we decided to improve the investment in monitoring low voltage technologies and to study how to exploit uh, renewable energy sources for the net for an active network management. Okay, great. Um, so that was some years ago, and and of course since then there would have been lots of advancements in the technologies. What sort of new solutions are you seeing on the market to help with uh, the management of renewables in the grid? Yeah, I think. Um, of course, uh, as I mentioned, monitoring technologies, traditionally DSO have been focused on medium voltage level because it's, um, let's say, you have more customer connected when you see the network from the medium voltage level. Uh, so it makes sense to invest more money on medium voltage. But as we said, we I believe all, we, we all understand that uh, low voltage network a lot of things is uh, uh, happening. Uh, if you think of e-mobility, the impact is mainly on low voltage network, electrification of consumption like heat pumps and distributed energy resources as well. So I believe uh, on average, we also have been investing in recent, recent years to improve the monitoring in the low voltage network up to, in some cases, perform some control action. Beside that, um, I believe uh, algorithms, of advanced algorithms, play an important role in that respect. Uh, in the past, just to set a, a little bit of background, you had the SCADA system, which has been traditionally used by control room operator, which is a passive system, which gets some measurement from mainly primary substation and allow the control room operator to perform some control action, but doesn't provide any simulation capabilities. On the other side, you had in the past planning department using network simulators, but it's not connected to the real time. So uh, this is convenience, let's say, has been solved by moving toward a DMS approach where you combine the two features all together. So now control room operator uh, in the DSOs where this technology has been implemented, they can have an overview of what's happening on the network, perform simulation, and the system suggests the best action to be performed to mitigate an issue. That's um, one example. And, um, I don't know if I may continue on the topic, for instance, uh, one key component for that, uh, which is enabled by such a technology is the state estimation. I'm not going too much in detail, but let's say the state estimation, let's say help the DSO to understand what's happening in the network in every node of your network, even if you don't have a sensor everywhere. Uh, based on this, uh, based on that, you can create uh, a forecast, some forecast scenarios. So you can determine beforehand if there is a congestion or a voltage violation before this occur. And uh, then you can take action uh, before the problem evolves in a fault on the network. Many of these processes have also been available through SCADA systems, haven't they, in the past? But I think what you're suggesting is that the ADMS is making them more efficient, more accurate, uh, more decisive. Um, is AI playing a big role in current ADMS systems being rolled out? Yeah, um, I mean, I think so. I think so. And um, j just to uh, want to come back about uh, the topic about the SCADA. SCADA, uh, it's a technology and it's in somehow it's embedded in the DMS itself. So the feature provided by the SCADA are still there and the SCADA actually are still there. The point now with DMS, you can combine algorithms with the observability on, of the network, which is provided by the SCADA. While in the past, you cannot do that. You have to separate tools. I see, yes. Which are, were not interacting right. together. So now uh, you improve the efficacy some, somehow because you can do something in the past that were, you were not able to do. Of course, there is also a matter of efficiency because they are more performant than, than other tools in the past. Uh, coming back to your question about AI and in general algorithms, I was talking about the state estimation, but there are several algorithms uh, which can be AI-based or 
uh, implemented by more traditional approaches doesn't matter, but the fact is combining a large amount of data, uh, IT information about the description of your network, your asset, together with operational technology data measurement, smart metering data, which is something in between the two domains, uh, you are able to feed all this load of data to algorithms and they really can support operators both for planning and real-time operation to do to better manage your network. I think a lot of the systems that are on the market now definitely support the operators and boost their productivity from what, what I understand. Um, there is a general trend across Europe, though, that um, attracting new talent, a skilled talent to the grid is proving challenging right now, um, and utilities aren't able to recruit at the pace they need to. Are next generation um, ADMS systems being developed with more automation um, to support lower headcount in the control center? Is that something that you're looking at at all? That's a tough question. I mean, the, it's true, it's a fact that it's difficult nowadays uh, to find all the employees we need uh, to cover all the activities. So this uh, is also related to field crews because we have to remember that despite the technology, we need people for the physical installation and maintenance of our network and assets. So that's, that's a common issue, I would say. Uh, I've been chatting with a lot of friends of mine working in other company and they have the same problem. Uh, of course, a system like the DMS can help you in being more efficient, meaning that you need less people to do the same. But on the other side, uh, the number and the importance of the challenge we are facing has been increased. If you think of uh, climate, extreme climate uh, weather events due to the climate change. Uh, so you have to invest a lot on the resilience of the network. This was not the case in the past, but now really this number is increasing year by year. So um, there are new things to, 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 to be done on the network. And so basically you, you cannot have less people. You, your objective is to have the same number of people more or less and try to let them focus on more important topics, avoiding repetitive actions. One of the things I hear quite often is that um, the, the senior leaders within the grid are charged with doing more with less headcount. Um, do you think that's realistic in the future, that we can reach a position where we will be able to do more with less than we have in the past? Um, uh... Who knows? I mean, we, we don't know. You, you know, the technology is changing really fast and rapidly. And uh, I cannot say that uh, I cannot say that this is not feasible in future. But uh, on the medium short term, I believe that uh, our target would be to uh, to be more efficient, uh, do more things with more or less uh, the same number of people. Of course, this is my personal feeling by based on my experience. That's not the position of the company. But on the other end, as I said, there are new challenges. We have to face them. There are new things to be done. And, um, and still, you need more people to do that. So you have to find a balance where you can uh, let the people focus on very important things and avoiding less relevant tasks and repetitive tasks. So in that, in that sense, uh, I believe uh, AI and um, can provide an important uh, support on that respect. My final question for you, Davide, is we recently had the blackout in Spain that was caused by uh, renewables integration. Um, what are the, some of the lessons that have been learned and that uh, new activities or initiatives that you're putting your attention to to ensure that you don't experience the same type of incident in your operations? Yeah, uh, so let's say that these kind of events uh, are mainly related to transmission networks. Mm -hmm. Of course, renewable are connected also on distribution network, mm -hmm. but the let's say the operation of those events are handled by TSO rather than the right. SO, at least in the first part. Uh, what I would say is, um, and that's a general comment. Uh, I believe that uh, renewable, as I said, uh, they brought 
about complexity in the network management. I give you a couple of examples, and those are true facts. But on the other end, they can contribute in mitigating uh, mm -hmm. some other issues. Just to give you an example, we were talking about the DMS. One of the, the traditional features of the DMS is the network reconfiguration. That is, you can reconfigure the medium voltage network. Let's suppose that you have a feeder with an overload and a feeder with an excess of a local generation. Mm -hmm. Through this algorithm, what you can do is to balance the two feeder and moving toward a situation where you reach an equilibrium, you rebalance the load between the two feeders. So in that respect, what I want to highlight is it's true, renewables brings complexity, but somehow they can bring also represent also an opportunity mm -hmm. to mitigate other issues. The point is to invest in technological solution in such a way you can really take the benefit from them. Okay, Davide. Well, thank you for your insights today. Really appreciate your time. Not at all. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And we'll speak to you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mandana. Thanks again. Thank you, Davide. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.